Oh, hello, 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 everybody. Okay, how do you do? Chat rules. Please. E-A-S-E. <laughs> Over the age of 17. And please always be kind to one another. And me too. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And happy Sunday. It is Sunday here at CL Aldridge Art. And you know what that means. That means we are going to color something pretty. And um, and before we do, we're just going to, you know, generally chat and say hello. And how has your week been? And all that kind of good stuff. Um, oh, yay. Yay, people are showing up. I won't have to just, like, you know, hang my head and feel bad and say nobody came. Uh, whoops, hang on. I'm popping out the chat, moving it over so I can see it. Combobulating myself so I'm not discombobulated. Because you, you don't want to discombobulated me. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Nice to see you. You finally caught me live. I didn't know you'd been trying. If I'd have known, I'd have slowed down for you. <laughs> um, or, you know, whatever. I, I, I've been toying with the idea since I seem to uh, enjoy doing lives more than the pre-records these days. Uh, although that switches back and forth. When I do a lot of pre-records, I like the pre-records better. When I do a lot of lives, I like the lives better. So, um of course, that kind of goes, that, that holds true with pencils. When I like pencils better, uh, you know, or markers, I like markers better. Hang on, I am smoking the last of that cigarette, and you all can judge me all you want, and it isn't going to change a darn thing. So <laughs> there's that, and we're going to put that out. Um, how is everybody? And... Uh, and I've got people, but only hardly anybody chatting. Hello, Mona. And <laughs> no judgment there. Okay, that's good. Hello, Barb. And thank you for that nice comment that you made. I'm pretty sure it was you. Uh, it was somebody uh, named Barb, Barbara, um, uh, who has a YouTube channel. Uh, I was overjoyed to see that um, uh, Anne at a color uh, <laughs> at a colorful life hello and at a colorful life the one who's responsible for all of this uh had uh gotten a copy of 40 fan favorites and uh and and i don't believe i sent her that but i might have uh and was coloring it on air uh yesterday or the day before i don't remember which uh i started to watch it however uh, got about, oh, probably 45 minutes into it, had to go do something else, and I haven't been back. So I've got it in my queue to finish watching. Hello, Corolla. Hello, Crystal. Um, if I sound better, uh, well, you know, I actually feel a little bit better, and uh, hopefully I can get through the day again with no coughing, and uh, we'll see what, what happens. Uh, and the voice is strong, and and uh, I feel good, and so life is is good, I think. Um, okay, so what we are doing, what we are doing is <clears throat> now. First off, I got to tell you, let me put the y'all y'all know I love my ink pens, and I love my Derwent graphic pens. So those are there. Pardon the background. We had a a. a um, I cleaned the inside of the computer. Are you okay? You saw the news. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I saw it um, the next day. I don't watch television, so I don't get the local news uh, unless somebody points out something to me. And uh, yes, Daryl Lynn, it happened at the oceanfront, which is about 14 miles from where I live here in Virginia Beach. Um, 
I, I still don't know what happened. Somebody went nuts. Um, a lot of people died. And that's all I know. Um, you know, I hate to say that we've sort of gotten to the point where, um, you know, when these mass shootings happen, it's, I, I actually paid more attention to the one on, um, at the grocery store in, uh, I, I want to say it was, was it Colorado? I, I, I honestly don't know even where it was. Um, I do know that I have my thoughts on mental health and, and you know, that it would be nice if we could find a way to keep guns out of the hands of people who have mental health issues. Um, I don't think the guns are the problem. I think that it's the, it's the, it's people who are ignored, people who feel uh, belittled, people who feel, uh, you know, that society has nothing, you know, no benefit for them, no, um, you know, they're left to their own devices. Uh, and for the most part, you know, we see somebody who's struggling, we see somebody who's in trouble, and we look the other way. And, and that's what's got to change. I think that more than anything else, uh, whatever it is that happened out here in Virginia Beach, I don't yet know the details. I will study them. Um, It's just, you know, what do you say? This is a, this seems to be a problem that's limited primarily to the United States. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't know what the, I don't know what the answer is. I know I'd like to see a lot more attention paid to mental health is what I would like. Um, so uh, all of that said, uh, another, I'll be another year older tomorrow. It's bittersweet. Well, Michelle, happy birthday for tomorrow. Um, I mean, I'm glad that you'll be older. I mean, I'm glad you do realize what the alternative to growing older is, right? And so, you know, I, how about we welcome, <laughs> let's, welcome the fact that we have grown a year older uh and uh and the, i mean that's it's it's sad we you know we've got people that we miss and all of that but dependent upon your belief system they're either with you all the time anyway or you'll see them again someday soon soon doesn't need to be sooner rather than later does it i mean you know Technically, oh no, not me, Mona, not me, not my birthday, not yet, <laughs> not yet. I think I still have another four or five days, <laughs> four days, I think. Uh, yeah, no, geez, Louise, I had no idea. Uh, really, hang on, is it okay? It's the 28th, 30 days has September. April, June, and November, all the rest of 31. So I get three more days, right? 28, 29, 30, 31. I get five more days. I get five more days of being 61. <laughs> uh, but then the supreme goodness is on my 62nd birthday. I qualify for Social Security. Yay! The first check will be here in the middle of May. Yay! Actually, it better not be a check. It better be an electronic deposit because I am still waiting on that $1,400 check. <laughs> and supposedly, it only went out in the mail. Uh, well, theoretically, it was cut on Friday. It'll probably be two weeks before it goes out in the mail and another two weeks before it gets here if it was anything like the last ones. So let's put it this way. I am not holding my breath and I am extending my meals. <laughs> I'm adding extenders to my meals. <laughs> Just in case. Knock on wood. Hello, Jill. Hello, Connie. Lovely to see everybody. Uh, Robin and Daryl, let's see, Daryl, Lynn, Mona, Robin, 
all of you guys coming in and um and yes it is just a fun fun day i actually feel really good which is uh, unusual <laughs> i got to tell you it is unusual that i should feel good um i have uh, I, I, what i've been doing uh, this week actually is i have uh I, I have let my backyard get way overgrown right it's got lots of trees back there and and i've got tons of birds that live back there. The deck literally is surrounded, however, by trees that shouldn't probably be growing in my backyard. But uh, in the front yard, there was a stand of uh, oak tree because the, the squirrels get into the flower bed and they put in these silly uh, or acorns, right? And uh, uh, and over the years, an oak tree will grow, and then various other trees will grow. And I, I let it get away from me last year. Uh, usually, I try and go out and you know chop them down while they're still sort of seedlings. Um, and you know, at least keep the view open so that I can see out. Last year, I missed it. The trees had all leafed out before I got a chance to do it, so I let them grow. Unfortunately, that was a mistake because this year I got to cut them down and it's a little bit more work. Uh, so I've been out there for three days cutting down a space about 15 feet wide and about eight feet deep. There's that many trees growing in there. And of course, I got to do it neatly uh, because that's the way I do things. So I saw one down and then I saw off each of the branches and I you know, cut everything off to no more than four feet so that the trash guy will take it because if you don't bundle it up just right and whisper the right amount of magic words over it, uh, he'll find some wrong, something wrong with your bundle and he won't take it. And then you're faced with having to call the, you know, the, 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 the guy with the trailer to come haul it all off to the dump for you. And so, so <laughs> I've been, I've been out there whispering and, and sprinkling magic dust so that everything is, you know, no more than four feet long, no leaves sticking out, nothing to cut anybody or trip anybody or, you know, you can't use wire, can't use bailing wire or anything like that. You can use, of all things, clear plastic. So, you know, right, I want to put that into the environment. <laughs> No, it's all these trees are piled up on the lawn. I got to get them off the lawn because the guy's going to come mow next week. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, at least I hope so. He did. He drove by and he said, oh, my gosh, it's 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 a miracle. She's actually outside in the sunshine. I said, you smart ass. <laughs> And yes, it is a miracle, but I still had to go back in. All right, so uh, if you are new to my channel and you are looking at uh, all of this, no, I am. I don't live with an abuser. I actually have super, super thin skin, and I have been out uh, biting trees, and trees have been biting back, and so that is what is going on there. Uh, I apologize that it's a bit unsightly. I shall try and keep my arm down here. So you don't have to look at that. Okay, so this is, all right. Now, I did a little bit of experimenting. First thing I'm going to do, if you are unfamiliar with a picture or a book, they are small. Uh, this particular one measures, although they do make them bigger. Uh, this particular one measures, uh, there we go. Uh, just about seven inches by... Uh, about nine, so seven by nine, and inside is this, which is actually attached right there, except I disattached it or unattached it, and all the pages are stuck together. Now, they don't, uh, they're not perforated, so they're not designed to come apart. You're, you're actually coloring this big old long strip and uh, that's cool. And then it's got on the other side, 
it's got sort of simpler versions along with usually a story that uh, you know talks about all the different characters, which you can also color, uh, which I think is very cool. Now, obviously, if you were to, you, oh, and then there's a drawing exercise back here on the back. <clears throat> now, this particular book, which is Wayne Anderson's Enchanted Forest, unfortunately, does not seem to be available anywhere anymore. Um, I checked Amazon. I checked Book Depository. I checked Abe's Books. And uh, all three of them say that it is currently unavailable. But other of the Pictura series are still available. Um, and Pictura is a type of book, and it was published by more than one publisher. So it could just be that the, because I only looked at the ones that look like this. All right. So it could be that others, the artwork has been licensed to others, and it may still be in print. So um, this one is Enchanted Forest. Now, there are others I have. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know. There they are. These are the two others that I have, which are Coloring Nature and Draconis, which are dragons. Uh, and then this one is uh, also known as Under the Hedgerow. Uh, and I love this one because it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, this is what it's like when it's still attached, but just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, bunnies and froggies and chickadees and all kinds of stuff just all throughout it. So it's wonderful. Gary, uh, just looking at the moment, weather bad, connection not great. Okay, well, I'm glad that you have stopped in. Uh, and yeah, well, actually, you know, Risa, it felt really good to be outside. It's also, if I'm perfectly honest, it's one of the things that is wrong with my skin is the fact that I don't get enough sunshine. Uh, and I really should do that. Although I do need to talk to, I want to talk to Anne because I know her dad's got really thin skin as well. And I, but I also know he gets out in the sunshine. So I wonder if it helps really or not. So I'm going to ask her. I do know that it's that he scared her that time that he fell and, and, because when I, like, my neighbor, I, I really didn't even realize it, but my next door neighbor came out of her house uh, to walk her dog, and she looked at my arm, and she said, you do realize that you're bleeding, right? <laughs> and I, I looked, and from this spot right here, uh, from this spot right here, I was, you know, bleeding, like, all down my arm, and I didn't even realize it, so. Um, doesn't hurt, I can tell you that, it does not hurt. Uh, okay, so anyway, that's what I was doing. All right, so I left this last week or last week with just having done this pipe right here. And so I wanted to see what would happen if I extended the method out to this bigger pipe. And I have to admit that I like it and I don't like it. Um, I like the effect. I don't, I mean, I don't like the execution. I don't like how I executed it here. I want to move this uh, lighter space over. I think I can do that, but I could be wrong um, at this point in time. Now, I used a mixture of, yeah, I can. Um, I used a mixture of Derwent Inktense and Derwent Graphitis. Now, the Inktense is, of course, permanent ink. The Graphitis are uh, not permanent um, Graphite, you know, the stuff that same stuff that uh, that a lead pencil is made out of. So I can move it over. Okay, that's what I want. I want to move. I wanted to move this reflection. I put it way too far over here. So for my highlight. Uh, but I also decided that I really, 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 really don't want these to be gray. I want them to be bronze or gold um, or copper actually more to the point i want them to be copper and so what i wanted to find out with you guys today is can we treat this 
like undershadow and make them copper by going over the top. Now, if we do this limited space right here, um, and given how many of these there are, these pipes there are throughout the entire piece, uh, if this one gets messed up, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It'll just be part of the story. Connie, did I just read that you finished this one? And uh, and how very, very cool. I need to find your videos on that. Hopefully you did some. And um, uh, see it. Or you showed one at, uh, at Minima. Hang on. I am looking for... Of course, you know that I brought out that the big eraser last week, and then I haven't seen it since. So, grr. Because um, what I wanted to do is, is take the big eraser to that and see if I can't... Uh, yeah. so I have another one. this. I don't know if the kneaded eraser will work or not. <laughs> Anybody else know? Uh, no, the hedgerow. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. That's the kneaded eraser. No, it doesn't work worth a darn. Okay. Uh, at least not on this. I mean, it works, but it's, it's not good for this particular application. All right. Well, we will not worry about things that we've got no control over. We will just proceed ahead as if we knew what we were doing. <laughs> All right, so now I like to, pardon the glare there for just a second, I like to fold that lid over on my uh, ink tins and get the second back in its own rigid case. That way I can flip them the two sort of back and forth. These are my precious babies. I absolutely adore these pencils. Um, now they are, once again, they are ink literally in a pencil. Um, solid ink. And this is, oh, ha, look at what I found. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So what I am looking for is a copper. Okay. Look, there's the baked earth. Baked earth is a good copper color. And tan, tan is a good uh, mix with that. So I want the baked earth. And this is why a swatch book is so important, is so that you can find the colors that you need, uh, you know, without having trial and error. Uh, after you have used your tools, you get an idea of how they are going to lay down, how they're going to play together. Uh, I know that I'm going to also want probably the mustard because the mustard is just one of my absolute favorite, favorite colors right there. All right, so let's see what kind of damage we can do here without messing everything up. All right, let's all right, move put that up there and move this down here. And you guys down there, and then maybe we will be able to bring up camera controls and go to advanced. Oh, Emily. Oh, she was lashing. Sorry, guys. All of a sudden, all my notices are coming through. Oh, my goodness. What did I do to deserve all of this? 
what do i subscribe to a lot of channels is that what you're trying to tell me <laughs> hi kenny uh is so neat and organized well yeah this actually this one i gotta say say this very nice uh older english gentleman uh had put that on i just did a google search for um um color swatch you know blank color swatch derwent ink tents and it popped up with this pdf that i could just print off and put my own it, all the typing and the boxing and all of that was already done um and uh so you know all i had to do was put in my colors uh so and that's all i did is i just typed in uh, blank you know blank um derwent ink tent 72 set or you know a swatch something yeah it, use your own like you know i don't exa i don't remember exactly the search term i used but it popped up like almost right away uh and i only had to look at a couple of things uh okay so i'm going to uh, start out with adding just some baked earth out here right which is the more uh, sort of orangish coppery color whoops sorry i've got my camera controls huh i got my camera controls right in front of my uh so i couldn't even see what i was doing Uh, and of course, if anybody has any questions along the way, uh, or you know has something they would like to uh, talk about or ask about, I saw uh, just as I was signing on, I saw that um, uh, Lori over at Color My World. This is the uh, that's the mustard. Uh, this is the tan. Uh, Lori over at Color My World um, had posted that. Uh, that uh, pencil prices overall are plummeting. Uh, I don't know if that means that there is a, uh, you know, they're responding sort of to a lesser demand and therefore they are lowering their prices, you know, because prices went up and up and up and up uh, the more popular this hobby became, you know, became. Um, now, of course, for those of you who know, I do draw my own, um, coloring books. I do draw coloring books. And so um, uh, I, I, this is now the mustard, I believe. I'm just adding in a little bit. Now, once again, this is Derwent Ink Tense. So it is, uh, it is going to be, um, there's, I'm not really adding a ton of pigment um, because you can always add more, but you cannot take it away and so what i want is the golden yellow um that i will just very very lightly all right sort of use right in here okay now this is a water brush once again i uh, a lot of times when i'm working here what I like to do is assume that there is at least going to be one person here or perhaps people who watch later who have never seen the product before, which is why I you know, have a tendency to to talk about it a little bit each time, you know, as if it were as if you were seeing it for the first time. You old hands, you already know what, what's going to happen. And that is, is all these colors are going to sort of blend and meld together. And note, I'm, you know, sticking to sort of one area at a time and working in an up and down fashion. And that is so I don't cross contaminate those colors. Now, a water brush will not put so much water down on your 
paper that you are in danger of uh, paper peeling or anything like that. That said, you can peel the paper. So you just have to be sure that you don't go over the same area too many times and be sure to let it dry uh, between each um, layer of color. You could put unlimited layers of color. And because ink tents um, is permanent once it's dry, um, you know, those under layers are, won't move. What is concerning me at this particular time is, is that I also used a fair amount of um, Grapitent, which is not permanent. So I'm trying to be a little more careful in making sure that I don't um, oversaturate the paper. All right, so now all right, that's going to require some tweaking, but I like the fact that it now sort of looks a little old and and kind of rusty looking. See what I mean? And um, Kenny, you're back. Yay. Uh, the prices seemed uh, too up when you, okay, when you were in lockdown, when it was lockdown. Yeah. Um, and hello, Della. Nice to see you. And it is Della, right? I, I want to make sure I'm not missing a eye. My vision is so whacked out most of by this, you know, by any time that I've, I've done. I am, I kind of am, I don't know, guys. I'm kind of enamored of the way that looks. <laughs> I, I kind of, I kind of like that. I really do. That makes it look like an old rusty pipe. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, holy moly, you knew that it uh, that a plan could come together. All right, now, these I want to be uh, fittings of some sort. Uh, now, uh, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> now, okay, so the, the secret to the way this looks is in those grays. And, you know, adding those shadows down underneath. And um, actually, there was a great video, and I don't remember who it was. It was a, um, it was a, uh, it was a, um, it was a sped up video. And the woman was coloring in, it's, it's somebody I subscribe to, but I'm not super familiar with. Uh but she did a, a, a time, it a, was a, you know, it was sped up. <laughs> and what she did is she laid all her gray shadows in first and then started color. She was coloring a person. Um, and then all of the, uh, all of the other stuff around her came after. Uh, shoot. What was her name? Somebody remembers. So I know somebody saw that video. And it was just amazing. Uh, yeah, I, Kenny, you and I are probably, you know, I think all of us at this point in time, we have books we haven't even looked at yet. We haven't even cracked the covers on. Um, and that, we, you know, we should do that. <laughs> we, we really should do that. Uh, okay, so now there's a neutral gray. Uh, that's a sepia ink. I don't want that. I want, there's the charcoal gray. Um, and then there is the ink black. And there is the Payne's gray. All right, so the Payne's gray is sort of blue. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to add just the tiniest bit of ink black right in there. What I want to do is I don't want to, uh, I want to, I want to preserve the, the, uh, the areas, 
I want to preserve the areas. I, I want to preserve the fact that the separation between the, the components, you know, like this is, you know, an arm that's off of this. So I want to make sure that I've got a little black shadow in between the back and, you know, between what's behind it and this. All right, but not so much that uh, that it it is overwhelming. All right, now this actually I'm going to keep on with this just one second. Come over the top right here. Okay, so I want that one those to be just a little bit stronger of shadows. Then I've got the, uh, the charcoal gray, which is slightly less black, which I will then extend out and use in the dark spots where Wayne has put in his shadowing. in his art because you have to remember that these are these are he drew these he probably drew these for you know for some other function and they ended up being used in a coloring book as well so okay so once again i'm just adding in shadow I want to be very careful around him because he's got little whiskers and they're going to get lost. So we're going to end up having to put those back in with white. Now I got to thinking about white uh, the other day uh, because I never have any um, uh, Posca pens or anything like that. Uh, so, you know, what do I do for my white acrylic? Generally, I use white acrylic paint uh, out of a tube. There's no rule that says it has to be in a pen form. Um, so if you use a tube, which you can buy one cheap, a lot cheaper than a Posca pen, um, and you happen to have um, a fine line brush, like, you know, something like that, then there's no, you don't have to have a Posca pen I'm always looking for how to work with what you've got, um, you know, but without having to go out and spend your money on a bunch of new things. I love that we're all, you know, for those of you who are able to, but when uh, a lot of people who really get a lot out of this hobby are senior citizens on a fixed income uh, and they can't afford to go out and buy the latest uh, you know, uh, coloring <coughs> uh, tool or whatever. But, you know, maybe at, at Walmart, uh, you know, a dollar forty nine tube of acrylic or, you know, even a bottle of the uh, white acrylic, uh, you know, apple barrel and all of that. Maybe they can use that. I checked out the price of those uh, Posca pens, and I went, I don't think so. <laughs> what, are they made out of gold? Okay, I'm going to add those four little rivets as well in shadow. Okay, now I'm going to then grab my Gravitant. Now the the gravitants. Once okay, so that's those are the inks, right? And so I'm gonna grab the gravitants, and this is the swatch chart for the gravitants. Um. So as you can see, gravitants are a much more subtle color array. Um, and so I'm using the cloud gray, which is this, 
a light gray. And if you use it heavy, you end up uh, with that. And if you uh, use it very lightly, you end up with this. So he was afraid, wait, well, he was a little afraid of Baloo, but at the end of the day, let him come up with, who was afraid of Baloo? Uh, I, uh, a child of Minerva? Um, and welcome, yes, absolutely welcome. Whoops, uh, what do I think of, okay, show. What do I think of white gel pens? Uh, well, I think that they get clogged up. Uh, <laughs> I think they're fine. They're absolutely fine. Um, I, I The problem that I have with gel pens is, is that you try to use them over uh, a lot of different pencils and things like that, and they end up uh, sinking into the color. Um, now, Kenny sent me this, this absolutely fantastic set of uh, the Color It gel pens. And I have yet to really put them through their paces as far as um, coloring something with them. I've used them a little bit for a detail, but uh, I like the... Uh, uh, the, the white gel pen, you know, it's, it's fine. It's just like a, you know... I've, I've used it, uh, I have, I, well, I had a couple, uh, but they, both of them have sort of dried out now. Um, uh, and I used them to highlight my gemstones. And they worked really, really well. Okay, so I'm done. just, once again, lightly adding some gray in, darker toward the, you know, toward the sides. I should concentrate less on yakking it up and more on actually coloring, huh? <laughs> but, but the only chance I get to yak it up is here. Oh, and I don't mean yak it up. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> uh, a boy from your brother's wife. The boy from my brother's wife. They are finally here from the Philippines. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Was this her son before she married your brother? Or their son together? Not that it's any of my damn business. <laughs> uh Okay, so let's give that a shot. So this is, uh, you know, just sort of laying in some, actually, let me add a little bit more of the, um, of the neutral gray back here. Actually, that isn't what I want. I want the, uh, this is the graphitant. So this is the midnight black. So this is what I mean. I keep adding, you know, I add layers of color, but, then I, uh, I'm mixing these two, so it's very difficult to know what will stay and what will blend out. Okay, so I know that this is ink tints, right? I know I used ink tints around here. And I know I used ink tints here on the these edges, okay? So that's what I want to do for, see, and you can tell I didn't use it up here. See how I'm getting, you know, virtually no, uh, there's no, there's no permanent line of, of differentiation. just a little bit so I stop 
shake, not shaken, but um, being quite so tentative. So if you work the the, um, the darkest areas first, and just be very gentle with it, then you stand a much better chance that they'll stay there when you start layering color over it. So it's learning how your tools behave. <coughs> Excuse me, and how they mix together with other tools. So, the Der, you know, Derwent products are great. I did see an interesting review. Lindsay over at um, the Frugal Crafter did a review of the uh, Derwent Chroma Flows. And her question was why do these pencils exist? Uh, considering that. You know, Derwent makes such a good product with the light fast and uh, and she came to the conclusion that they're really sort of the the you know the answer to um, you know the answer they're Derwent's version of Prismacolors. You know, sort of the the middle of the the middle of, of the middle of the, well, I don't want to call Prismacolors the middle of the road because they're not. They're, of course, you know, there's so many people's favorites. Uh, but from a price point, they are, you know, the middle of, of the, uh, you know, of the, the, the expensive. So you, you buy the, the, the Prismacolors, because you want the best of both worlds. You want a really, really good pencil. But at a price that won't kill you. <coughs> It'll only, you know, wound you. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, Harry did it. Uh, Harry, yeah, Harry did one that was posted, I don't know, about... 20 minutes later, I think I saw it. After I had watched Lindsay's. They obviously did not take notes from each other. Because <laughs> they were both busy editing at the time. You see, I just, I love the way that that works out. And of course, I am so meticulous about the, you know, sort of the, the lay down of this first layer. I apologize that it takes so long, everybody. Uh, but it's really what makes it uh, easier to do at the end. I am, I love the way that, I mean, I could just be wrong. But I just love the way that that came out, just looking sort of like this rusty pipe. It looks real. I hope it looks as good on from where you are as it does from here. Um, I would hate it if you guys were going, oh, well, that's ugly. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So now... Let's try this again because we're we gotta wait for that to dry. So let's try. Now I do want to okay. Well I can add it back. I can add it in later. Okay, so this again is the dark of the copper color. Okay. And then this is 
the tan, which is more of a, actually I do, here's one of, one of the things I want to do. I want to lay just a tiny, tiny bit of this copper color, a little closer to the inside there as well. Then come over it with the tan. A little bit more to the outside. And then the mustard. Is that this one? Yes. The mustard, which is more yellow. Sort of come over the top of that. And then finally, the golden. To just grab that a little bit right now. Rinse and repeat. Okay. I am liking this. Um, Kenny, I started today with a buddy color. Doing with Connie Corolla. Okay. Uh, Charlotte is, oh, you're, no. Kenny, I can't imagine you being a bad friend to anybody. Hello, Charlotte Gunkel. I haven't seen you in ages. And hello, hello, and hello, Leah. And oh my goodness, that is so wonderful. Welcome, welcome, everybody. And this, see, this, I, this is what made me want to do it is that I was experimenting a little bit with these, uh, you know, with these golds here. So I want to change this side, which I can change it up if I want to. It's my coloring book, and I'm the boss of it. Next week, I thought we'd do another 80 marker challenge uh, since it's been a while. Anne was Anne reminded as she was working on uh, my page. Uh, I just love it when she does that. Uh, uh, that we did that. She did that uh, 80 marker challenge last year. And uh, then we, of course, took it up over here. Uh, on this channel, and I did a page uh, from uh, 40 Fan Favorites, and uh, it turned out really cool. And it, uh, it's just blindly picking the markers out of um, a bag, a big, big bag. Uh, and you got to use what you choose. Uh, what you, you get, you, I, except you get a pass if it's really ugly. You know, if it's like, if it's like the 13th gray that you've chosen, that kind of thing. Uh, and let's face it, I do prefer gold, Della. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I was going to find a way to get my way anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know me so well. <laughs> uh. Do I like gold? Okay, now, uh, let's see here. Because I still don't quite know what I want to do for my fittings. So I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to go here to the outside. I was watching uh, Bo of the Fifth Column today. Y'all know that I love Bo. And he was talking about, uh, well, actually, of course, you know, the, the, the big, the big, uh, I think I probably missed the news about the, what happened here in Virginia Beach because I was quite so incensed about the news out of coming out of Georgia. And so, yeah, because y'all know how I am. I am sort of political as far as stuff like that goes. But at any rate, so today, uh, without going into any of that, uh, Bo was talking about um, 
one of the best ways to combat uh, systemic racism is to for people to consciously diversify their circles. And, um, you know, as in consciously make friends with people that you wouldn't normally make friends with. Maybe they don't live in your neighborhood or they, uh, you know, or they aren't somebody that you encounter every day. But if we consciously do that, we start to see the places in life where our friends are affected. And how do we normally feel about our friends? We don't like it when other people hurt them, right? Uh and I thought that sounded like a pretty good idea, actually. So. And uh, I, the other thing that I, I really. I enjoy the presidential news conference this week immensely. <laughs> I, I, I think that I would not want to have been a kid uh, in Joe Biden's house and have done something bad. <laughs> he, he comes out with that voice that, you know, that, that, that this is unacceptable voice. And uh, I had a, I had a laugh. Because my dad had that too. He had that exact kind of a voice. Uh, uh, oh heck no! <laughs> We're not going to deal with this. Uh, hi, Momo. Momo, see. And uh, thank you, thank you, Kenny. I am liking it. I really am. It's. I. Th I really do think that the secret is, you know, having laid down the gray shadow first, but it's one of those sort of happy accident things uh, that, you know, it, it wasn't intentional. Uh, I really, you know, didn't intend it, but look, now I can extend it out into the, uh, into the leaves and it'll be interesting, right? Uh, it'll be really interesting. So let's do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Let's go here and let's just try that for an experiment. Thought experiment. I'm trying to stay under the camera. Uh, so anyway, I like uh, I, li I like Bo because he, uh, you know, once again, I don't agree with everything he says, but I do agree with enough of it. And he's got, he couches everything in a, you know, this is not, not necessarily something that will work for you, but it is something for you to think about. And that, I think, is, is what I like about um, any kind of uh, somebody who takes on, uh, an, I don't want to call him an educator, uh, because I think what he does is he does, he's a teacher. He poses questions, and a good teacher poses questions that make you thoughtful about the answers, you know? And, um, and I, and I like that. It's a style and it's, uh, we need some more of it. It's, we need more people like that in the world that are less judgmental and more thoughtful. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be an ideal world? If people didn't sit around and judge one another, but instead they actually you know, spent time trying to put themselves in each other's shoes. How would we deal with that? Uh, let's see. Yes, we do need a little bit of rust. Hang on, I'm looking for the rust. I'm, oh, there it is. It's hiding under here. It would be amazing, Charlotte, I tell you. <laughs> I, I guess hope springs eternal. Hope springs eternal. 
it's just, it's so hard. You know, I am of an age where, um, where, you know, I, I, I saw how hard my contemporaries fought for the rights that they have. And to see them stripped away like this, just, just takes your hope away. And that, I think, is, that's, that's instantaneous death. I think that people need to, people need to always fight for their hope. And they need to not, you know, they just need to not put up with it. Just don't put up with it. They can't do what you won't put up with. Except by force. And if they have to force you, they don't win. You know? They do not win. I am liking that. Okay. See, now that actually works for me. I, I, I just didn't like that silver. That's what it was. I didn't like the silver. Okay. So we do that. I know I'm driving Daryl Lynn crazy with those unsharp pencils. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it really is, Robin. It really is. I think that, uh, you know, I, I liked the... Uh, I like that the words that, you know, that that Mr. Biden or that President Biden used, you know, he said it is. It's disgusting. It's it's just it's wrong. It's it's wrong on every level, every single level. And uh, but don't worry, because we will fix it. One way or the other, we will fix it. Get those folks voted right the heck out of office. Heck, I mean, some party doesn't even agree with him. <laughs> That that uh, that you know, governor of of that state, his own his own voters don't agree. He's going to be a little shocked come re-election time, considering he didn't actually you know he had to. That was that contested race anyway when he became governor. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens next time. Although I don't know what the. Uh, I don't know what the term is in Georgia. Is it six years? I don't, I honestly don't know. But when it's time, he'll learn. This is the ink black. I could maybe have just messed this up. Hopefully not. Let's take it off. Yeah, okay. Just want to see if I can shadow that down. I wanted to. Because the fittings are usually where the most of the rust is, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like the way that. Okay. There we go. Yes. Now it looks all. Now it looks all old and gnarly. Old and gnarly. <coughs> okay. <coughs> that is so pretty. <laughs> The, the uh, highlight is still in the wrong place here, but I'm going to just ignore that for right now. The OCD part of my brain is going to stop looking at that. Uh, and we're going to think about uh, this. 
and maybe yeah I think that these I think that these need to be just for no better reason than the fact that they are uh, to the inside here uh, they need to be sort of rusty look at Give them a give them a little personality. All right, and then let's see here. Oh, that's the tan. This is that. This is the problem that I'm having, and this is one of the one of the things about ink tents. This is this here is a much lighter color than this but the heads are the, but if you were to go by these it would it's it's wrong right so this is one of the reasons why it's so important to swatch your tools swatch your pencils because this kind of thing happens all the time so um These are actually, it's almost like that is the tan and that is the mustard. And so like they got dipped in the wrong tube or, you know, like they, it's like they got dipped in the wrong things. And maybe they did. Who knows? Maybe other sets are different, but this one's, I mean, it's got the writing on it and the whole nine yards. So if the cores got, you know, misplaced, in the thing or whatever i don't know okay Let's see now trying to crush down that um you know just a little bit Let's see how this will work. I think I maybe needed to add some shadow underneath. But we'll see if we can work it in reverse. I, I, that's exactly what it is. I didn't put the shadow down. Or in there. Trying to keep my hand out of the shot so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, I needed to add some shadow in there. That's what the problem is. So let's fix that with the next one because we learn and that we apply. Learn and apply, learn and apply. That's just like life. We learn and apply what we learned. Learn and apply what we learned. Every time. All right. I think that's the, okay, that's the neutral gray. That's the, there it is. Okay. That's the midnight ink. All right. So this is. And that is that back there. Now, once again, this is the graphite. And then this is the neutral gray ink. Make sure that I, I'm keeping it really light. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and then we're just going to leave this very, very sort of 
feather out that edge once again with the graphite. So now let's pull the dark. Trying to darken that back edge up just a little bit where it got <coughs> a little too light. <coughs> well, one second, guys. I got to mute you. Oops, sorry. All right. Well, I shouldn't have stopped, but I think that's okay. See, when I stopped, it left that kind of harsh line there with the ink. I don't want to work that anymore because I'm going to uh, I'm going to end up <coughs> cutting that paper. <coughs> All right. Excuse me. So we'll just have to wait. We'll have to come back to that and fix it later. We've already put the shadow in on that one. So maybe we can try this experiment up here on that and see if it works. Okay. And just a little teeny weeny bit of the tan. Okay. Yeah, I'm just ending up coloring this exactly the same way, aren't I? All right, well, <laughs> I guess it wants to be the same. Mustard and a little bit of the... Yeah. Uh, okay. So then we can go with the. Oops. Uh, go with the shadow. So that's the ink block. No, that's not what I want. I want the midnight shadow. We're down here. Okay. Technically, you shouldn't be able to see that. So I'm sure that one was a mistake. And this one should be light. So it's going to be the mustard right here. Because it is going to catch the light. So if that's the mustard, then this needs to be... <coughs> oh, excuse me. This needs to be the, wait, where is it? Where is the color I want? That's the ink black. That's the charcoal gray. That should be the neutral gray. Thank you. Coming out of there. Just way back there in the corner. Okay. <laughs> making making quite a meal of it again, Christine. She's Louise. The devil is in those tiny little details. On the other hand, those tiny little details are very often. The difference between what makes it really interesting to look at 
or something that you just go, nee, it's all right. <coughs> okay, yeah, see. Now that I've done it, I don't particularly like it just as a regular brass bidding, but you know, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Maybe if you tried the one that's hot, Christine, life would be better. Mm. Instead of drinking the cold coffee, how about you drink the hot coffee? Or better yet, how about you mix them both together? Ew. 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 Sorry. Ew. Ew. Does anybody, you know, when you uh, when you microwave a, a, cup, a cup of coffee that's got milk in it, and it gets that scummy, icky, icky thing on top? Ew. Ew, ew, ew. On my coffee. Ick, hang on. Ick, get out of there. Get out. Ooh. <laughs> ick, 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 ick. I know. <laughs> Fortunately, it's really not. It's more of a texture issue than anything else. <laughs> it's like. All it is is milk solids that have congealed. Uh, but yuck, it's yes, it's yuck. So <laughs> anyway, I have to laugh. Yes, ooh. All right, let's go with, uh, let's, as a matter of fact, let's quit. That's right. let's, let's rust this baby out. It needs to. Needs to be rested out. I just want to add some more color to it. You know. Uh, no, except, except that I used my. <laughs> I used my thing for it. I used my thing to dip that thing out of my coffee. Uh, so now I have to get a new thing. To... Yeah, you didn't think that I drank it, do you? Ugh, no. <laughs> I dipped that puppy out. Okay, well, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Uh, but it makes it a little bit different at any rate. And we can add, uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's add little, uh, let's add little rivets. We can add little, uh, we can add the rivets with the ink black. Uh, let's, let's see. Here we go. And we'll add the little ribbons. Right? When in doubt, you could do this with a ballpoint pen. You could do it with a I can do it right over the wet because this is a micron. So it can go right over that wet.
Okay. Say hi. Okay, so let's move on to something else because now that we know that we can do that, <coughs> let's make this leaf a little bit of a stronger green. It needs to be a stronger green since it is now with the gold. And that is a good thing because uh, because it is. <laughs> When it was with the silver, it needed to be mute. And now that it is not, it can be a better color. And I'm going to choose the felt green, which is the 1530 pencil, which is one of my favorites. Uh, let's see here. Is that the felt green? Yes. So this is roughly the color of a... Uh, um, pool table. Thank you. You knew uh, that's what I was going to say, right? I'm just not adding you. I mean, you know, once again, most people when they when they work with ink tens, their tendency is, <coughs> excuse me, to put down too much pigment. So it's easier, once again, to add pigment. Cannot take it away. So when you're airing, be sure to air on the side of caution. So my neighbor, who hasn't spoken to me in years, she she and I started out as friends, and then I broke some unstated rule of hers. Uh, you know, of course, you never know what they are. Uh, but for some reason, she took offense to something I said. And, uh, you know, and then she didn't speak to me. So I finally appealed to her husband one day. And uh, I don't know that, you know, wasn't that much longer that she came over and she needed something. Uh, she wanted to know if she could do something. And I said, oh, certainly. You know, no, I think they needed to park a car in my driveway for like a week because they were, you know, having their work done or something you know, else. They were somebody was there was a work van that was going to be in their driveway, that kind of thing. I was like, no problem, no problem at all. And so then we were friends again. And then she, uh, you know, she did this incredibly kind thing uh, by, you know, finding it, helping to find it used furnace and having her son install it in my house so that I wouldn't be without heat in the winter time. And, uh, but then, then sometime in the next few weeks, I guess, I must have done something again that upset her. I don't know. I, you know, I had paid her for the furnace and I heard, and cause she had to front me the money. Uh, and so, but I paid her back for the furnace and uh, sent, you know, the appropriate thank yous and everything to the kids and for their help. And I don't know what I, you know, what, you know, what rule I broke this time, but she hasn't spoken to me again in years. And I, to the point where I actually saw her at the 7-Eleven, went to say hi, and she turned her back and, you know, put her nose in the air kind of thing. <laughs> I'm like, well, whatever it was that I did, I... At least it would be nice to know what it was. But anyway, uh, I digress. But it occurs to me the other day, it occurred to me the other day. I saw her, actually it was yesterday, I think. You know, we were we were having a who can ignore who contest. <laughs> who can ignore who best. Uh 
But then it occurred to me as I was, uh, you know, came in last evening. I haven't seen her husband in weeks. Not in weeks. And, you know, his truck isn't parked in the driveway. Her car is in the driveway. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, God. <laughs> you know, so now I got to, after, after the stream today, I've got to, I'm dedicated to finding out what is going on over there. I mean, it was, and this has just been, you know, just, she hasn't spoken to me in years. I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. So could be he had uh, knee surgery and he's in rehab. Uh, you know, it could, could be any one of a number of things. Because uh, she's leaving a lot during the day, which she normally doesn't do. And so, you know, that's what leads me to believe that he may, he may be, uh, you know, he may be in, in rehab or had a, maybe had a heart attack. I don't know. So, but I got to find out because I can't actually, you know, just ignore it. That's kind of a crappy way to be. Okay. Uh. I mean, it's like, you know, fren frenemies right up until somebody attacks one of them and then they're best friends again. <laughs> kind of thing, so. Yeah, I gotta go find out what's going on. Find out what's going on with my friend there. All right. Um, well, shoot. I don't know what I want to do here, so I guess... I will just do this. Let me do this. Let's just disappear those. They don't necessarily need to be a prominent part of anything. So we'll just disappear those fittings right there. Maybe we can figure out what to do with it later. Uh, right now I could start here with the golden yellow on this one. And then back here with the rest. Once again, the golden yellow. And the uh, see, I want the mustard. No, the tan. Yeah, no, the mustard. Where's the mustard? Mustard. Where is the mustard? Okay, there it is. In the meantime, my across the street neighbor who, of course, lost her husband last year, survives cancer. She survived cancer. I mean, you know, she had major surgery. Um, everybody thought she was a goner. It turns out she's in full remission and he dropped dead. So she's making the best of it. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's doing really well. She's doing really, really well. She's lost a ton of weight. Uh, you know, she's uh, stopped dyeing her hair so that uh, 
so that it's this pretty silver color again. Uh, whereas it, you know, it used to be like this kind of bodily blonde. Um, thank you, Charlotte. And, uh, and you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend years or uh, week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next Sunday. And uh, yeah, that that's, Kathy, that's exactly my take on it. That's exactly my take on it. Good for her. Uh, well, and I think I've said on the channel that when I first moved here, I was told that she uh, didn't want to, to be friends with anybody in the neighborhood. Well, as it turns out, um, I don't, well, I don't know how much that's true. I was a little surprised that uh, she she does she does not hold her her you know her husband is not in the he could do no wrong category of her existence. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't surprise me at all that she's you know that she's uh, that she has chosen now to thrive. And don't flourish. Uh, all right, I uh, yeah, I am. I'm I'm shocked at how good this is turning out. I really am. <laughs> I uh, yeah, that's that is an interesting that is an interesting way to color metal, and uh, and I'm I'm all in. The artist in me is all in here. Uh, Okay, so I could do this all day long, guys. Um, all right, let's see. Although I I realize, you know, I appreciate that you probably would not like that if I did it. Uh, but surely, she says, we should be able to get further than this. But on the other hand, uh, I did title this video Coloring Metals. Uh, and so that is what it's really about. Okay, so this once again is the uh, baked earth. Oops, sorry. Don't mean to smack you. Then here's the tan. Now, uh, I am losing the... I have to remember that they're there. I'm losing the little squirrel uh, whiskers and such as that. So... Okay, there is this. Uh, fabric is still super soft. Okay. Keep reading that. I'm assuming I, I was assuming you guys were talking about Derwent Intense, but no. I was gonna say no, 72, 72, and then there's some bonus colors too. Uh, okay, mustard. I just might convince myself that I can color anything with ink tips. <laughs> it's just a matter of trial and error, right? And that's, the, you know what, everyone, that is so true of any kind of coloring medium, though. If you are just willing to put, you know, put in the, uh, the, the trial and effort, worry less about not knowing how to do it, and worry more about figuring out how to do it. Uh, <clears throat> people will say to me all the time, well, I can't do that. I've never done it before. Really? Well, then how about now? 
now would be a good time for you to try it. Because I can't is such a defeatist attitude, right? We don't, we're not defeatists around here. We're can do people. We can do this. You want us to make, you want us to make a metal, gold and rusty and bronzy and, and, you know, steam bunky and all of that. Have you ever done it before? No, I have not. Never once. Till now. Right? So you just, and if you approach your whole life that way, that's exactly the way I do it, or at least the way I've tried to do some of it. Can I do it? I don't know. But if I don't try, there is a sure fire answer. And that is no. No, you can't because you didn't bother to try. And this, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the philosophy portion of our show today. <laughs> That's funny. I'm always interested to hear how people cope with things, you know. If they found tips or tricks or, you know, how they found a way to keep a really good outlook when everything around them is falling apart, you know, that kind of thing. Oops. Local experimentalists, hello, come to my channel and see. Uh, no, we're going to hide that. Uh and we are going to, whoops, hang on. And we are going to hide that user on this channel. There we go. Yay. Sorry, I didn't realize I didn't have a mod. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> I know. You can't eat it. It's here to relax. You don't want to be mod. Uh, but, oh, wow. It's 342 already. Uh, yes, Brandy, I am using Inktense. And, uh, yes, I'm using Derwin Inktense, and I am coloring today in um, Wayne Anderson's Enchanted Forest, uh, which is a Pictura book. And um, although it occurs to me, isn't uh, one of Joanna's books Enchanted Forest? I could be wrong. Maybe Enchanted, oh, or no, hers is Enchanted Garden. Okay. Uh, but um, sadly, I am just shocked. Uh, 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 Kenny, I was, uh, I was, I was kidding. I, I wanted to know if you wanted to be a mod. Uh, but I, I said, Kenny is here to relax. She's a mod in a lot of other places, and I don't want to put any pressure on her at all. Uh, beside which, uh, I usually have one hanging about somewhere. Uh, but it looks like everybody's, I guess, Gary fell asleep. Uh, and... Uh, but I just, I had a, uh, not a troll, I, I just had somebody that come in, came in, you know, promoting their own channel kind of thing. So, something about, you know, watching police violence and, you know, kind of protests, stuff like that. Uh, no, thank you. That's not what you came to coloring channels for. Can't 
even see the lines of the book. This one. Uh, well, yeah, they're 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 blurry on purpose. Um, oh, yeah, th that's the, the style of this particular book. Hang on. The style of this particular drawing book, and actually I think that we can we can go ahead and come back up and spend a uh, little bit of the time. What we're, what we're doing here is we're learning to color metal. Uh, I'm learning <laughs> to color metal in, uh, in uh, using my German ink tints. And uh, what we're coloring in is the Pictura book. Now, this particular one actually almost, oh, let me fix this. Uh, fix, not the auto, uh, don't want auto focus. Ooh. There we go. Uh, uh, yes, a regular coloring book has much darker lines. This particular type of book, though, it's almost like a grayscale, and it's designed specifically so that those lines disappear into the background. And uh, it, it, Pictura, of course, is a long strip. All the pages are attached. They are not perforated, so it's not designed to tear apart. Uh, and um, anyway... Okay, if no other mod is here. Okay, yeah, hopefully I, I shouldn't, I haven't needed one up to now and I hopefully I won't need one today, but that's good. Thank you, Kenny. That's a very nice offer. Uh, if you're if you're the solo with, with moderating experience, see, that's what you get for being so darn good at it too. That's why everybody wants you to be their mod. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah, and that, now I wish I could, whoops, hang on. Uh, Here's the other two. The other two that I have, it's the same story. Uh, now, it, it should say, Brandy, that you get used to it. Um, after a little bit, you get used to the fact that you can't really see the lines. Uh, in that they're not, you know, it, it's not like, like my coloring books. Uh, like you know the coloring books that I've drawn. Um, when I you know when I draw, you can you can see all the lines. <laughs> They're not fuzzy. Uh, but we can look at this. Ooh, pretty. Here are my little dragons. Is that pretty? This is these are things that we've colored here on the channel. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Someday I am still going to get around to sending that to Nanamo. And uh, there's when dragons come calling. They all have names, by the way. Uh, this it, this was a... Uh, was this a... Um, no, this was just a... I don't remember exactly what this was. This was a challenge of some sort, but I don't remember what. And this has, uh, uh, Daryl, this has the white uh, gel pen. And then this was my, uh, this is my whatcha doing dragon with his sparkles. And then, but this, uh, oh, wait, where is that? Yeah, my, in, in, there's just all sorts of stuff in this book. Uh, and so now I've got to see, I like the way I surreptitiously got to show you all the stuff in my book. This, no. Oh, boy, I forget sometimes how good the people who color. The people who color my work um, are so good. <laughs> they really are. All of you guys uh, here who colored it, thank you so very much. Uh, but that's one of 14 books that I've drawn. But yes, this style is, uh, 
once again, you do, you get used to it. Now, this one is a little bit more um, fuzzy, all right? But that's because of all this metal work. And so he's actually put these shadows in for you. And then Draconis, uh, now Draconis doesn't have that much shadowing, but it's got a much fainter lines. So it's got the main subject in darker lines, and then the uh, background areas are all in the lighter lines. So you kind of have a clue as to, uh, you know, as to what's what. Like, you know, sort of the main thing here is the the dragon face, whereas all this back here is in a little bit lighter uh, pan. And Yeah, I love this. I love, love, love this. I have the, the big one of this as well. And uh, so anyway, so uh, that is so cool, everybody. That is just so cool that we were able to do that. I am so very pleased. Uh, and I, I'm loving the way that that metal turned out. Okay, so. What do we want to do for the next 10 minutes? <laughs> I know that I can uh, I can either uh, stop 10 minutes early or uh, you can let me uh, go pee for a second and I'll go as long as you want or I can continue to color something here for 10. Anyway, hang on. <laughs> I do need to, I do need to pee. So, sorry. Hate to, hate to be so human on you. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so one of the things that I had noticed, everybody, is that I haven't seen Sammy in uh, about three weeks now, and I am wondering if uh, everything is okay. Do we know? Is there some... Oh, I know, I read uh, she's taking the month of March off, isn't she? Just, to, oh, never mind, never mind. I did. I, I did investigate yesterday and found out that, yes, she's taking the month of March off. Never mind. And um, anyway, uh, so, uh, Kenny, you want to, uh, I will watch back. You want to try this metal? Yes, a story. A story. You want a story? <laughs> Uh, 
Well, let me see if I can think of a story. Um, hmm. Let me see. I'm sure there must be a story somewhere. Ay, 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 ay. Is that in focus? Well, yeah, it's probably as in focus as it's going to get. Um, daughter lost power already. Wait, what? I'm playing with the focus, guys, so. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, I had it. There it is. Um, all right, please be safe, Kathy. Uh, wait, Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Kathy, where are you going? Kathy, Nick, okay, Corolla. Corolla, yeah, okay. Uh, whoa, high winds here today. Power lines coming down in areas around us. Um, Mona, are you, uh, by any chance, are you like in Illinois or no? Are you, are you, Mona, where, do, where are you? <laughs> Sorry. I've heard that it's, it's windy in Illinois. Um, go pee. Oh, okay. That was me. Go pee. You all go. Yes, we're all human. We always get Mona's weather after she gets it. Ah, she's in northern upstate New York. Okay, northern upstate New York. I think upstate New York is so pretty. And, you know, New York gets such a bad rap, but so much of it is gorgeous. And, and oh, But this city gets a bad rap for me only because... I don't like vertical cities. So, you know, I am not not a fan of a vertical city. You give me a country space, countryside. Um, I'm going to like it a lot. Okay, so, uh, all right, now, in that case then, in keeping up with the uh, expectation of Okay, so yeah, I like the darker green there. All right, that I think that's fine. I think these guys are okay for right this very second. Um, although I'm probably going to want to darken them up. I do want to try, uh, I want to experiment doing the adjacent two po poles. So let's, let's, since we're coloring metal this time, um, let's experiment with doing the adjacents. Um, right, so I, this is the ink black. And once again, this is the, the darkest of the dark. And it's permanent. And so you want to be very sparing with it. And I'm only going to use it to the a, a tiny bit to the uh, dark side of these lines. When I say the dark, uh, what I mean is, is that, that that area where the pipe behind or where the pipe, the next pipe is intended to be behind the one we're working on. All right. So then I want the neutral gray. The neutral gray or the charcoal gray? I think I want the charcoal gray. All right, and I'm going to be very light. Just, just the weight of the pencil. To add just a tiny bit of gray to the outside over that black. Okay, because I don't want too much shadow here. Because otherwise they'll look like, all right, but now this, and I'm gonna always work, I, I'm going to work in the direction that I'm going to stroke these. Uh, 
right? So, with the brush. So just laying up some shadow. Just being very light. Okay, so now, now I've got the neutral gray, which is the next one up. Um, that color, okay, this one. All right, so I started out with the ink black, all right, just a tiny bit. Then I went to the charcoal gray, which is the dark. And I used it uh, next to the ink black, just but with a very light, light hand. Okay. Now I've got the neutral gray. And I'm going to do the same thing, moving it just a little bit down further, but also with just a ridiculously light hand. So you're really only just letting the weight of the pencil lay a little bit of color down. On, you know, and just sort of we want it to have the impression of being sort of gnarly. Uh, <laughs> if gnarly, gnarly is a scientific word. Uh, all right. And then so like here is like a little object. Now, I don't want that object to uh, be too prominent, but I don't want it to disappear. So I don't want to use the ink black. I'm just going to use a little bit of the uh, charcoal gray. So the next one down, you know, the next color down there. And then up here in the neutral gray, I will put in these, although these are not really necessary because this is the color right there. All right. Okay, now this is, once again, this is not the ink but the charcoal gray, okay, which can just the, just the weight of the pencil, adding just a little bit of color on the idea that we can always add more, but we can't take it away if we put down too much. Charcoal gray. Okay. And just a tiny bit there. And then this is the neutral gray. So this is the lightest of these little grays. The lightest of the dark grays, I should say. Once again, just also adding just the tiniest bit. Just like that. Just to get those shadows in there. So repeating once again. Because we've got a dark edge right here. With the ink black. So we want to go ahead and go all the way down. So that we don't lose. Those dark lines. Or you know we don't lose the. We don't lose the. 3D objectness of it. <laughs> There's a word for that. I, I keep calling it the line of demarcation, but that's not what it is. The contrast. The contrast between the light and the dark. It's always going to be deepest at the point where there is a Separation of objects. There's, there's words for all of these and they're escaping me. 
little word. My little word factory is closed. The word factory in my head is under repair. Apparently. Okay, so this is the charcoal gray, just adding my little shadows in. And, you know, you'll just, <clears throat> you'll get to doing this, and you're just, you're just thinking. don't think so hard that you forget that you're live on air. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, sleep downstairs and the door to upstairs is closed so you can sleep. Oh, human. Okay, what's a ferdy? Oh, the birdies. As in fur, fur kids. Okay. All right, so what do I got? I've got the charcoal. Oh, I still got the charcoal gray. All right, I need the neutral gray. Is that what I've got now? Yes. Got the neutral gray, so we're going to come up with that. A little bit. A little bit in with that. Uh, oh. Okay, wait. Charcoal gray. Oh, that's the ink black. Here's the charcoal gray. Now, I... At this point in time, I have sort of eliminated the um, the gravitants. I want to see what I can do without them. If it turns out that I need the the you know because they're the gravitants have the much lighter well, and actually I do need to uh, use them in the lighter areas. Uh, okay. This is the charcoal gray, so I'm going to come around the bottom here, where this goes into the ground. With that, okay. And, right, so now... Once again, still charcoal gray. Now, uh, Daryl Lynn, are you still here by any chance? And if you are, uh, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. See how you can almost resharpen a pencil by just spinning it in your hand. So if you're ever someplace you need to sharpen your pencil and you, uh, you know, have enough of the lead protruding out over the, the um, wood, uh, you can use this method to sharpen your pencil. You just spin it in your hand. Charcoal gray. And 
Oh, wait. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. This one ends way back here. So, glad I noticed that. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I erase that out of there. Okay. But I do want to make sure that I put in a wedge that runs, oh, I don't know, roughly like, <coughs> like this to encompass the shadow of this pipe. And this pipe, since the light sort of keeps coming from only a little bit over this side. <coughs> okay. So now, excuse me, we're going to add just a little bit of the cloud gray. That's the weight. Cloud gray. Out here on my edges. Just to give it a space in which to join together with its brother. In color. Okay. So all of that just to lay down some shadow. Uh, gosh, I hope I'm in focus. Whoops. Now, so I've got my, my thing to, okay, so we'll just, because once you start this, you don't want to stop, go with your darks first. Come up your sides. You need to work fairly quickly. Now, one thing about it is, is that the ink tents itself won't won't be maneuverable for long, but the gravitants will. So, it's got graviton like for instance, that I handled that one badly. So let's try this one a little differently. Let's go with some sweet. Tried to work it, tried to work too much space at a time. Okay. So coming in from both sides and then down the center. I'm not sure what is going on right there. I think that that is meant to be one of these, but on the side. Yeah, okay, so that's what it is. It's supposed to be a rivet, but it's over there on the side, and that's why it's sticking out like that. Um, 
Your dog just grabbed a whip and decided to play catch me if you can. Oh no! Terrell Lynn! <laughs> what? What in the world? Uh, Brandy, uh, most of those are going to be stolen. Um, so be very careful uh, when you're uh, when you're printing out things that you find on Google. Ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of them are stolen art, uh, and the artists, of course, uh, aren't getting paid or anything like that. Um, or they're being distributed by people that the artist did not uh, employ to distribute uh, items, whether they're free or not. And um, so both of which are no-nos in the copyright world. There's only one legit way to get a freebie, and that is directly from the artist. And ask me how I know that. It's because I am an artist. It's what I do for a living. Now that said, there are tons and tons and tons of legitimately available free coloring pages. All right. Um, so you can go to any one of a number of uh, well-moderated um, uh, uh, Facebook groups or uh, you know groups and other social media, and uh, or you know directly to the artists themselves. Like for instance, in the uh, in the <laughs> In the description of my videos, <laughs> there is a link to my Facebook artist page. And on that page, you will find a number of freebies uh, in the album marked freebies. <laughs> of all things, I had to get really creative when I, uh, when I named that album. So it's called freebies. Um, Actually, I think freebies is the one in my fan group. Uh, I think that in my on my on my artist page, there's two freebies in the folder that goes with each book, and there but there's folders for each of the fourteen books in there. Uh, something like that. Okay, so um, all right, so there is one. <laughs> Yeah, there are just, I mean, there's so many artists and uh, that we've all got Facebook presences. We've all got um, uh, Instagrams. We've all got, uh, I mean, you name it, we're pretty much, we're pretty much represented. Um, and there are, in fact, free pages on just about everybody's. And once again, some of the, the well, well moderated and I do separate those out from the poorly moderated uh, Facebook groups uh, where, you know, people will post for, uh, for the likes and things like that uh, as they, you know, do a coloring and then they post it and everybody goes ooh and ah. And um, uh, that are, that have freebies that they legitimately got permission to put up on there, you know, to, as available to their closed groups. Uh, <laughs> that's the, that was one of the hardest concepts to try and explain to people. They'd say, but if you're giving it away over here, what's the problem with me taking a copy of it and posting it on Pinterest? Well, a, because over here, 
there are 20,000 members in this group. And on Pinterest, there are 20 million members. And uh, that's great, except that, you know, that I don't want to give it away to 20 million people. I want to give it away to these 20,000. I want to have them rave about it so that the other 20 million will go buy the books. If everybody can get it for free, then why bother paying for the books? But it's free advertising, you say. Is it? Is it really? <laughs> I'm sorry. And yeah. Rita Berman on her page has free ones too. Yeah. Oh, and gosh, she's wonderful. Uh, and uh, and Jane uh, Hankins has them and uh i mean er everybody has them. all of the all uh joanna bowsford has tons that are legitimately free uh do not and do not uh take the ones that are on unless like i say unless it comes directly from the artist or the artist's website it isn't actually free and whoever is giving it away doesn't actually have permission to do so. That is just a given across the board. Assume it is true. I had, sorry, I didn't mean to react like, like that. I'm like, whoa, no, no. It occurred to me that what I, what I was reading and I'm like, no, you don't want to do that. Not to mention most of the groups now, uh, once again, the well-moderated ones have um, prohibitions against anything from Pinterest or Google being posted in their groups. So, you got to, that's, it's onerous, but, you know, but the reason why, of course, you have to do it, uh, which is post the name of the artist and the book that it came from and all of that, is uh, is to help protect uh, the copyright of the artists. And copyright, people are confused about copyright a lot. And, you know, all you have to do is think about it, think about the words. Uh, the only person who has the right to copy, okay, a copyright, is the artist. Or somebody that they licensed the art to so if uh let's say that that there's a painting that uh, colin thompson did and he wants to license the art to robin's burger puzzles then he can do that and then robin's burger puzzles has the right to copy that image uh, and place it on jigsaw puzzles, say, I don't know, 200,000 times. You know, that, if that's what the, the, uh, the, the, the licensing says. And so then at the end, if they've sold 200,000, then they have to go back to Colin and say, we would like to license another, you know, another 200,000, please. At which point in time he says, okay, thank you. <laughs> because if he said anything else, he'd be stupid. <laughs> we rarely turn down an opportunity to license our art uh, Unless it's a product that, you know, we just can't get behind.
And the best part is, you know, is there's, you know, if you want to own a copyright, then you have to commission, and you're not an artist, then you have to commission the work. So you're basically, if you're paying a commission, and in the contract it says it's a work for hire, you are technically going to get the item with its copyright. So you will then own that copyright and you can uh, copy it as much as you want. And by copying it, we don't mean, you know, tracing it over or doing that. We mean actually photocopying it, printing it, giving it away, giving away duplicates of that one, all of that kind of good stuff. All right, so I, I just, I feel like I'm just being boring here, talking about copyright. Losing my cookies over pre-internet stuff. <laughs> it's like, argh. I never, you know, it, it, I was... I remember the first time, because I violated, I, and I tell this story, back before I ever, you know, drew anything, I quite accidentally violated someone's copyright. And she could easily have sued me. I was doing art, um, uh, uh, pencils, uh, pen, uh, pins, art pins. And I would use images and then... Uh, uh, put them on transfer and it would transfer to polymer clay and I would then take the clay and make a pin out of it, right? And so the lady whose artwork I borrowed, I didn't A, I, it, the image came up in a public domain search. <clears throat> and, but, but the image was in fact um, copyrighted and she contacted me and you need to believe that I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, and her name is Nancy Hampson, Nancy Jones Hampson. And she is an artist. And uh, the the art that I purloined uh, accidentally is a copyrighted piece of hers called Homer. And um, I didn't know any better. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I, like I say, I had thought it was a public domain piece. Uh, and of course, the minute that I found out, so anyway, I made the, I made the pin and I put it up on uh, eBay and I heard from her quite literally the next day. Uh, and so the first thing I did is I immediately pulled it and then I sent it to her. I sent her the original thing that I had made uh, to get so that you know there'd never be another question. And I took it out of my uh, inventory. Obviously, I took it off of my computer. Uh, you know, in the the um, uh, the database of pictures that I used, so I could never accidentally get used again. Um, and when I say uh, things in the public domain, I mean. Uh, like uh, photo, uh, I used paintings of Queen Elizabeth, um, not Queen Elizabeth the current one, but Queen Elizabeth the first. Uh, you know, stuff that's actually not copyrighted anymore. <laughs> and that's uh, legitimately in the public domain. Um, I was just, and, and of course, she and I are still uh, acquaintances today. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, when it comes to vocabulary, I have a bit of a wide one. Um, uh, the, uh, as a matter of fact, I have to, oftentimes I have to curb myself because I realize that if I said something, nobody would know what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, not in today's world. Um, but 
so anyway so uh, uh but it uh so it, she and i are still acquaintances today and this was 20 years ago this was easily it was like 1998 so it was actually more than more than 20 years ago i yeah, 98, 2008, 2018. Yeah, 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. It just occurred to me that my, uh, across the street, or my next door neighbor's son, he was 13 years old when I moved here. And he is about to be 30. I'm going to guess he's going to be 30 this year. That is just amazing. It's just amazing how time flies. Now, once again, this is just shadow and badly done, if I do say so myself. Uh, but I got to... Got my blood pressure up there for a second. So oh look at me still going at 4:30. I hope I'm not rolling right over the face of somebody. I don't think I am. At least 14 of you are still here. <laughs> I know I've lost my most of my European contingent because it's time for them to be in bed. And I think I'm going to, as soon as this one is done, guys, I think I am going to maybe call it a day as well. Only because my stomach is starting to make those noises. I'm sure you've been hearing it. <laughs> I've been feeling it. Um, and it's saying, hey, yo, you're you're gonna you're gonna eat sometime today. <laughs> yes, I promise. I had oatmeal this morning. I haven't had oatmeal in a long time. It was very good, but man, I'll tell you what. It's a definitely a stick to it. Stick, yeah, see, this one is way too dark. Um, this one is way too dark. And I don't like the fact that there's no, there's no, there, I've lost all the definition. So I got to go back in and figure out what I did wrong so that I can fix this. I've lost all the definition of, uh, 3D-ness. 3D-ness. What is that word? Arg, arg, arg. There's a word and I can't find it. It's in the library of my brain. But apparently it's in the part that's under repair. Okay, well, yeah, see, this is just badly done. That that whole that whole execution just sucked. <laughs> These two are poles and they're supposed to be one behind the other and they just don't look good uh part of it is the shadow i need to pull the shadows further i think that is i think that when it's dry and i get a chance to really look at it um was staples correct wait 417 and 419 Uh, I'm totally confused, Daryl Ann. Look at 417 and 419. 
No, there's no staples. There's no staples in anything. Uh, uh, 417 and 419. Kenny is the oatmeal. Wait, what? What word did I make up? Did I make up a word? You made that one up, Christine. No, I didn't make up a word, did I? <laughs> oatmeal, yay, I like oatmeal. I, I do, but it's really heavy. It's really, really heavy. Three Dinas, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I did cuz I cannot remember uh dimension. Thank you. Oh my gosh, there's the word. It lost all of its dimension. <laughs> okay, I'll have to well, wait. 470. I I don't know how to do that. Hang on. I can't, I can't go back in and look at a live stream. <laughs> you can do that. I can't do that since I'm the streamer. Uh, but I'll check it out. Uh, I don't know what I said or what. Uh, Perloid. <laughs> uh, I could, uh, uh, let's see, what, what is it? Uh, uh, there's a couple of words that I love. Planned obsolescence. I love that one. Um, uh, I I love words. I, there's just there is just nothing about words that I don't love. I love everything there is about words. There's simple words. There's complicated words. There's five cent words. There's throwaway words. There's one word meaning the world you know uh, there's just words are just an amazing amazing tool and they are an absolutely just an absolute wonder words are a wonder okay guys well we're going to continue on with this i am going to do it in a uh, in a, a video because i'm just having way too good a time to stop doing this, uh, but uh, look for pre-record. Since I did, in fact, clean the computer, I did. I cleaned the inside out, uh, and boy, was it dusty in there! Oh my goodness, I'm lucky that my computer was still running. It was so dusty in there. Uh, so, if you have a laptop or a desktop or a anything that uh, requires uh, the occasional spritzing with the uh, can of air uh, do so because, uh, of course, heat is the death of electronics. Uh, anyway, uh, so don't leave your phone in your car <laughs> for any reason, for any length of time. Uh, Yay, a video. Yes, Kenny. I will, in fact, do a video. I know you like them. Uh, all right. And so there will be, there once again will be videos. The only thing I'll have to decide is, am I going to finally teach myself to use the Resolve, which is a video editing software, or am I going to stick with my OpenShot because I know how to use it, and it's still pretty darn powerful. It'll do a lot. Uh, but I haven't looked at either one for months and months and months, so I am bound to be out of practice. Uh, I am loving the way this metal turned out. Love, 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 love. Look at what we've taught ourselves to do, everybody. That's pretty darn cool. All right, so what are we all going to do? We're going to say, Christine is going to say, thank you so very, very much for all of you, every one of you. You are such a blessing in my lives. 
that all of you come and join me each week, uh, whether you watch it live or whether or not you watch it afterward. Uh, you put up with my little weird stories and the fact that I, uh, you know, am, am, am decidedly not a conservative person uh, in anything. Uh, and so you're just so wonderful. And so until we meet again, color something pretty, everybody. Bye. Bye, Kenny. Bye, Daryl Lynn. Bye, Kathy Nichols. Bye, Jill, if you're still here. Bye, Minerva. Uh, uh, bye to anybody and everybody who has spoken up or who was here and remained quiet. Have a great week, everyone.